today. It's good to see all of you. Um, Ms. Lerner, I want to start with you, if, if I could. Are you familiar with the report from Wilmer Hale, uh, their independent investigation uh, regarding allegations of misconduct by three DHS OIG employees regarding the nomination of Dr. Kafari? I'm aware of the report. Have you read it? Um, a very heavily redacted version. So my office has been contacted by multiple whistleblowers who allege a widespread misconduct, uh, including, I'm afraid, you. And I want to give you the chance to respond to those. I always take whistleblower complaints very seriously. And they pointed me to the Wilmer Hale report, which I've now read, which I have to say is, is very, very disturbing. I mean, for those of, who don't know, it's 108 pages here. 70 interviews conducted, 42,000 documents reviewed, and what Wilmer Hale found is that a, a number of DHS OIG employees improperly interfered in the presidential nomination and Senate confirmation process regarding Dr. Kafari to be the IG at DHS. Wilmer Hale notes in the, at the outset of their investigation, or the outset of their report, rather, that, of course, any citizen has the right to question a presidential nomination in their personal capacity, Federal employees and their capacity as private citizens have a First Amendment right to express their p political opinions and may contact lawmakers to do so. Of course, that's very important. They go on, however, it is a misuse of authority for a federal employee to use his or her public office to interfere with a presidential nomination or the Senate confirmation process. And then they say federal employees should not use their government resources, including the email system or access to lawmakers or other government officials for personal gain or for any other unauthorized purposes. Wilmer Hale further reports in, in their investigation, following their investigation, that uh, these individuals uh, who were opposed to Dr. Kafari's nomination within DHS OIG came to you, Ms. Lerner, to discuss the nomination. They wrote to you saying that they had a sensitive matter related to the DHS IG nominee to discuss. You all agreed to speak on the phone, and following the conversation, Ms. Costello, one of the complainants, sent you a link to a report regarding California Coastal University, California Coast University, excuse me. I guess the complaint here was Dr. Kafari's PhD was not from an, an suitably uh, prestigious university. Uh, during the interview, uh, Ms. Costello spoke to Ms. Lerner about Dr. Kafari's nomination, stated they were doing so because it was in the best interest of the agency Ms. Lerner agreed that they had an obligation to protect the organization and figure out whether others knew that Dr. Kafari's degree was issued by a diploma mill. So what Wilmer Hale has found here is that you encouraged, uh, you were on government property at the time using government resources on government time, that you encouraged what Wilmer Hale concludes was a serious interference with the presidential nomination process and the Senate confirmation process and a pretty serious misuse of government resources. I know you didn't sit for an interview. Wilmer Hale says they tried to interview you. You wouldn't sit for an interview, but we have you here. These are serious allegations. Uh, I thought I'd give you a chance to respond. I appreciate you giving me the chance. To I'm not sure that. your mic is on. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Appreciate you giving me that opportunity. Uh, it, the most that I could say right now is that statement of the conversation is not consistent with my recollection of it. So you you deny that that you encourage them to. Uh, spread around complaints uh, using government resources that Dr. Kafari was unqualified for the position, that his degree was issued by a diploma mill? Senator, may I, may I jump in for a second? Oh, I'd like an answer to my question. I, do, I, I, I did not encourage, I did not take the actions as described in the statement made by Ms. Costello. Did you improperly use government resources to interfere with the presidential nomination, no. the Senate confirmation process? I did not. Did you use any government resources, email, telephone, government property? Government, did you work on this project in government time? In my capacity as vice chair, and, and Michael can speak to this as well in his capacity as chair, we would frequently be called by individuals working in OIG offices who had questions or concerns that they thought that we could shed light on. And we would endeavor to, you know, help the, to answer those questions. So, if, you know, when we, we, we take calls from people who have a concern and try to steer them in the right direction. And that's all that I did here um, with with these individuals uh, and and 
you know, I, I think that's consistent with our obligation as leaders of SIGI. Um, and, you know, at, at no point was I uh, trying to undermine the nomination of anyone uh, for a PAS position. Why, why didn't SIGI open an investigation into these allegations? Why did Wilmer Hale, why, would, why did there have to be an outside investigation which found evidence of wrongdoing? That's a question best directed to the Integrity Committee um, because it- But it was partly your decision, wasn't it? Not to open an investigation? Uh, no, I'm not a member yeah. of the Integrity Committee and the leadership of SIGI is purposefully separate from the Integrity Committee to preserve its independence to conduct in, in, uh, uh, investigations of uh, OIG folks. So when the report says that it's a misuse of authority for a federal employee to use his or her office to interfere with the nomination or confirmation process, and the federal employees should not use their government resources, including email systems, or access to lawmakers, or other government officials for any unauthorized purpose, you're saying definitively for the record under oath you did never do any of those things. I did not, you know, undermine anyone's nomination for, for uh, a, a PAS position. You, you didn't use the email system, access to lawmakers, or any other government resources for any unauthorized purpose? I used the email systems to respond to questions from individuals about their, uh, you know, a, a situation in their office and, and, and to attempt to steer them in the, in the, in the right direction. And, and provide guidance to them um, as they confronted a challenge. That is not, in my view, uh, uh, inconsistent with my obligations as a public servant. Well, I'm, I'm disappointed that we're here and that this is, frankly, it's come to this impasse that we have this report from, from Wilmer Hale uh, that is quite extensive and, and quite lengthy. You didn't sit for an interview with them. They weren't able to get your views on any of this. I noticed neither did you, Mr. Horowitz. Mr. I frankly think it's very disappointing. And I think the fact that we now have multiple whistleblowers coming to us about this series of events, I mean, this is, this is harrowing reading, to be honest with you. And it's disturbing reading that it would be, this would be happening. And I just want to say I'm, I'm going to try to get to the bottom of it. But I'm, I'm disappointed that it's, it's come to this and in this setting. I appreciate your concern. Um, but I would say that Mr. Horowitz and I engaged with people on both sides of that situation who had concerns and wanted to protect both the, the privacy of, of both of the, the entities that we were involving um, and, and so that people would feel comfortable coming to us for counseling in situations so, like that. Senator, let me respond to that um, because the serious issue, Joe Kafari, by the way, used to work in the DOJ OIG, as you may know, was an agent. Um, I talked with Joe both while his confirmation was pending and after he became IG, and he can explain to you however much he would like. I'd, I'd be happy for him to do that, how much time I spent with him, as did mm -hmm. Allison on several of those calls to help him as the IG to get settled in and to deal with some of the challenges he was dealing with. In terms of that, I also talked to him actually, on, as he can describe to you, and uh, if you'd like, and I think it may be even in that report, um, when he wanted to move forward and sought to move forward um, with the allegations and how to deal with them. Um, with regard to Wilmer Hale's reach out to us and to me in particular, um, we engaged with the lawyers and asked them to give us some idea of what they were looking to speak to us about. Um, as Ms. Lerner just indicated, um, as SIGI chair and as vice chair, I regularly receive calls from IGs, from others in the IG community to give them advice, guidance, views on how they can proceed. Some of it was as routine as career advice. Some of it was far more significant. Um, and the question I had for Wilmer Hale lawyers was um, what information generally in the areas they were looking at and to get at, because we do have an obligation to ensure that discussions we have, like I had with Mr. Kafari, um, are maintained in confidence when the individual who comes to us would like them to be in confidence. 
um, and then assess whether there is a need for the investigators to have that information. I've got to understand a little bit more before I just sit for an interview with Siggy Chair um, and be asked about a variety of conversations that I've had with people who come to me. And I frankly view it akin as to the IG Act provisions that are in the law that as DOJ IG, let me put it this way, as DOJ IG, if those individuals had come to me, there's an IG Act provision that requires confidentiality. So I've got to think long and hard about that before making a decision on what to speak to. Um, I never ruled it out, but the question was uh, until the end, until there was no, an unwillingness to have that discussion. But that, that was my concern, is that we didn't have a, um, a, a dialogue and I wasn't comfortable um, at the time knowing what I was to speak to because frankly, I didn't have first-hand knowledge of a lot of what I ultimately ended up reading about in the Wilmer Hale report at the time reached, they reached out to me. I was not familiar with it. My, my time has long expired here, and the chairman's been very indulgent. I'll have some additional follow-up questions for, for you uh, for the record. Uh, I, don't, I can't adjudicate your dispute with Wilmer Hale as to why you did or didn't sit for an interview. I'm just noting the fact that they say that you had relevant information. Uh, in particular, you, Ms. Lerner, ha had likely had information about these discussions would have been able to shed light. You didn't sit for an interview. Um, that's your prerogative. But, but this is, the fact is, this is serious. These are very, this is serious, what I read in this report. I hope this isn't normal. It sure as heck shouldn't be. And I think we've got some more work to do to, to get answers here. Thank you, Mr.